Good, 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 good. All right. So, again, we don't know what time Matt will show up. <laughs> Last time at the end of the class, he texted back and said that he was, his mom said he was sick. So, I don't know. We will find out. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Where are, oh, my pens are here. That's right. Because I had a, I had a one-on-one -on -one downstairs today. How's school? Everything getting back to normal now? Yes. Mm, that's good. How many nights a week do you have to study now? Mm. How many classes, night classes six. do you have? Six. You have six nights of class. Yes. Holy macaroni. So which, which night do you have off? Sunday nights? Mm. What's your one night off? On Saturday. Oh, what class do you have on a Sunday night? I have... Uh, I, I cannot remember. <laughs> too much. It is too much. They're, they're really... They're, they're, they're going to burn you kids out. That's it's too much studying. Way too much studying. Oh, my God. All right. Well, at least this class, we, it's not hard. We just practice building up some vocabulary and have some conversation. So it's a big difference. All right. Let's see. Is that everything that sounds good? We hear everything? Because we're just going to start. Because, again, we, we don't know what time he'll come. <laughs> okay. So we go to doom, 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 doom. yeah, today we're going to talk about online safety. Seems to me we've already had a lesson on online safety, haven't we? Mm. Do you remember talking about online safety before? No, no, okay. I think there's a, another lesson in. Oh, yeah, but okay, no, what we did was the last test, remember, we were, they were talking, they gave us stories about um, online dating and some scams and, and what to look for, what to look out for when you meet people online, and yeah. that, that's where there was a lot of online safety tips. It was in the last lesson. We, we did talk about it, but this is more general online safety, I think with... If I remember, I read it here. Where is it? It's going to be on page. Making plans. This one's going to be 116, 117. Student book. Okay. Let's go there. And check it out. 116, 117. There we go. Yeah. We're going to talk about nine different tips how to stay safe online. I think a lot of it is common knowledge now. This book is probably eight or nine years old too, so I'm sure you've probably, it'll be an easy read anyway. It'll be easy. But we got some new vocabulary in here to make things more difficult. <laughs> of course. So let's get started. Our first. Sometimes you'll see this on your handphone, right? They want to know where you are. No. Yeah, but what's like on your phone, you can activate, you know, Google wants to know where you are. You can activate something. What is that? It's another word for place. And if you use Google Maps on it too, it'll show you where you are and which way to go to get to another place. What's the other word for another place? The word for Start, place. Yeah. Um, Starts with an L. Location? Yeah, location. It wants to know your location. I always turn it off. I don't like the idea of handphones and everything tracking everywhere I go. <laughs> I don't like that. But yeah, a particular place or position. A location. That's an easy one. What city is this? 
Los Angeles. Yeah, I got West Hollywood up there. Hollywood's a pretty big city, for sure. Mm-hmm. I flew in there and spent one night in Los Angeles, but of course I didn't get a chance to go visit anything. I just came in at nighttime and then left early in the morning, so... I can say that I was at the airport and the hotel. <laughs> but other than that, I, I did not visit anything else, unfortunately. Which is too bad, because I wish I could have spent a few days. I would have liked to have gone to Hollywood and the Walk of Fame, and I would have liked to have gone down to Long Beach, the famous, famous... Where is Long Beach? Oh, Venice Beach. It must be down here somewhere. Seal Beach, Westminster. Oh, Long Beach is right here. Okay. At the bottom here. So I don't know if it's all this part. But it's quite famous. I would have loved to have seen a little bit of the city. Maybe someday. But it's so expensive now. I don't know. Probably never get a chance to go to Los Angeles now. Probably not. Agree? Hmm. Well, agree means you both approve, right? You both say yes. You both see the same thing. You will need agree from your parents to go on a trip. Agreement? What is it? Agreement? No. Hmm. Right. Read read the uh, the definition there. What does the definition say? The act of allowing someone to do something or allowing something to happen. Yeah. Sometimes you have to ask your your teachers if you can do something or your parents. What do you ask them? Hello? No, they, if allow means they said yes. They, maybe they'll say no. Huh. Permission? Permission, yeah. You got to ask for permission. Right. I need to get permission from my parents or I need to get permission from my school or my teacher to do something. Permission. She's going on a trip. Well, she needs to get permission from her parents. You want to approve you want you want to go to America or some country, foreign country? Uh, you're going to have to get permission from them to get a work permit or a residency card or something like that. Permission. Another way to explain a normal day. Daily? Daily just means that's, that would be like using an adverb of frequency. Every day or always. But this is, um, what is your, well, you don't, I, I put both words in there. Something day. What is your mm day like? And it's the things that you mostly do every day. You know, a student basically gets up, has breakfast, goes to school every day, comes back, maybe plays for a while, does, has dinner, and does their homework, goes to bed, and does the same thing the next day. Or a farmer would have a routine almost every day. So we could say that is uh, for a farmer. Or if you're asking someone what a normal day is like, Also, it can be like related towards uh, the locals in an area. Maybe they have certain habits or they do things a certain way. Uh, it could be a way a certain group of people act. Oh, that's mm, for North Vietnamese people. They're always like that. Most of them, you know, the majority. Or that, that, that's the Americans are like that all the time. Almost all the Americans are like that. So that's uh, mm, American. Starts with a T. Uh huh. Tradition. <laughs> Tradition. Tradition is usually something we pass down generation to generation. Yeah, keeping mm-hmm. traditions from an area or a country or a religion or or a community or something like that. And it's not about tradition. No.
Typical days are typical. Tip- typical. 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 Typical day. Yeah. Oh my. That, that's a typical day for me. It means I do it almost all the time. Oh, that's typical of the Americans to sit there and and say that uh, that I'm a racist, you know, or whatever, whatever it is. Something that commonly happens. Yeah. Typical. It's uh, another way would be stereotyping people too. Um, you know, Westerners do it. Asians do it. I'm sure Africans and, and Arabs, they probably do it too. Um, they will automatically or naturally have an idea of what kind of person you are when they know where you're from. Oh, you're American. Oh, okay. I already have a picture in my mind of what most Americans are like or what most um, Asians are like. Most Vietnamese, and that would be called stereotyping, right? You're kind of judging them on what you know of the place or the, or the country or the area and kind of generalizing most people to be that way. It's a little bit different. Stereotyping. All right, so you got a couple of examples here. The state or fact of having... A duty to deal with something or having control over someone. Like your parents have a mm to you. Mm. Taking mm when you make a mistake. Oh. Uh. Let's respond. Mm-hmm. Let's watch something. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting your head is not going to help. <laughs> Responsibility. Yeah. Responsibility. Responsibility. <coughs> Responsibility. Ability, yeah. Responsibility. All right, yeah. The doctor took full responsibility for the failure and resigned. Right. That's my fault. I need to go. She takes her responsibilities as a nurse very serious or seriously. Yeah. Responsibility. Okay. All right. So you kind of got to look at their. Oh, yeah. Light. Well, they are, they are, they are, they are. Did I get any message from Matt yet here? Hmm. Now, Matt. Where is Matt? Hmm. <coughs> well, in this case, there's it polite, sure. But in this case, they're showing uh, it's like polite. But here, you see how the little girl, they made, they made a mess and they're just laughing about it. And then she kind of just pointing up at her grandfather. That's not really good. So in this case, she's not showing any. And here they are showing it. So what is it the little girl is not showing? And what is it the two men are showing? Uh, Respect. Yeah, respect. Yeah. She seems to be uh, being disrespectful, dirtying everything, taking grandpa's rocking chair and then pointing at him. That's kind of a good way to get in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) Get a smack on the beep beep. (laughs) Respect. Have you have you played tennis with your grandfather lately? No, I'm too busy for that. Ah, oh, still too busy, huh? So you didn't get to play tennis with him this summer at all? Um, sometimes. But okay. Not easily. A few times. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. Does he still play every week? 
Yeah, I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, respect. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Read the definition there. Just say or do or do something to someone that would call offensive. To say or do something to someone that is rude or offensive. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a an answer from Matt. Mm. Send. Yeah. You say bad things to someone. What are you doing to them? Uh, someone cusses you, someone swears at you. Oh, there's Matt. <laughs> Oops. He's Johnny. Yeah, he's here. He's a here. Finally. Late again as usual, but he's here. Mm -hmm. Right? You're <clears throat> the woman I love. Ah? Oh, I don't know what that word's supposed to be. You're... Well, the, the, it's not something ing. Whatever the word is in there is not the word. I don't remember. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, six letters. Yeah, okay. So you, it it can be a noun or it can be a verb. He, mm, her, by telling her she was not only ugly but stupid too. Oh, my God. How rude. How offensive. How offensive. <laughs> Why did they get in a fight? Because he, mm, his girlfriend. No? Are you sure? I know you know this. I N. <laughs> Matt, what is it? Sleepy Matt? <laughs> Where have you been? Oh, my God, last week at the end of the class. I'm sick. I can't join. I don't believe you. I think you were eating fried chicken. No chicken today. Oh, last, last class. You were eating fried chicken, and that's why you didn't want to join the class. <laughs> Nobody knows this, really? <laughs> to say or do something to someone that is rude or offensive. What if you swear to someone? What if you tell them that they're useless and dumb? What are you doing? Scold. Ah, well, scold is what your parents do. That's different. You know, that's when you do something bad and they're angry with you and they're giving you heck. But scold, that, that's, a good, that's a good guess. But no. Five, four, three. Two, one, unbelievable, unbelievable, an easy one, insulting, insulted, an insult, hmm. you never heard that word before? I heard about it, but <laughs> you heard about it, you heard, you heard about it, huh? <laughs> That's an insult. Yeah. Be rude or offensive. That's an insult. An insult. Try it. Right. Read the first sentence, Chi. You're insulting the woman I love. I should have had Matt read that one. Matt, you read that one. You're insulting the woman I love. Insulting. Insulting. Yeah, not Zol, but Sol. And Insult. the other one, he insulted. We got a T with an ED, so it's going to be an ID sound. He insulted her by telling her she was not only ugly, but stupid too. Unbelievable. T. T. 
He insulted her by telling her she was not only ugly but stupid too. Stupid. Stupid. Pid, yeah. Not very smart. That's pretty bad. Do 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 do. That's not good. Very bad. Very unpleasant. Oh, don't sniff at that. Oh la la. He was a mm man with never a kind word for anyone. So I could say he was an insulting man too, yeah, but that's not the word we're looking for. When people say bad words all the time, all the time. we can call them something. Or if something's horrible, like, you know, horrible food or something, we can give it another word too. So just a five letter word. Starts with an N. Nasty. Nasty, right, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Now. Now we can start giving points. Nasty. Yeah, it could be a nasty smell, could be a nasty person, could be a nasty attitude, could be nasty words. Yeah, there's a few things you could add nasty to. Nasty smell. Yeah. All right. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh. Victim. Yeah. Say it again, Matt. Victim. Vic. Don't forget, go up to that K, yeah? K -k Victim. Vic and then roll the T out. Victim. Victim. Yeah. Victim. Victim. Yeah. Victim can be. A result of many things. It could be a result of violence or war, or it could be a, a victim of a crime. Mind you, she doesn't look like much of a victim since now he's the victim. <laughs> a person harmed, injured, or killed as a result of a crime, accident, or other events or actions. Yeah, so something that's usually out of your control. Usually, usually something out of your control. And then it would classify you as a victim. Now, if you go trying to feed the lions in Africa and you lose your arm or they eat you, well, then they're not going to call you a victim. They're just going to call you stupid. <laughs> you try to get a close-up picture of a, a hippo um, to get a selfie and he attacks you. Well, you're not really a victim because you, you kind of did it yourself. <laughs> but these situations, you would be a victim. Yeah. To ask for something. The act of politely or officially asking for something. Apply. Hmm. Apply is to put something in motion or to apply for a job. It's like fill out an application or something, right? To apply for a school, to apply for a job. Request. To a request, yeah. Is that Matt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Matt. Yeah, to request. His request was, or his request for information was denied. An application form will be sent to you on request if you ask, right? So we're not just going to send them out. You got to ask us for one first, and then we'll send one to you. You have to request it. Request. Chi? Request. Request. Matt, one more time. Request. Request. That's right. Ah, uh, we got yeah, yeah, okay. So why were you late today, Mr. Matt? What is your excuse this time? What? What do you mean what? I asked you twice. Why were you late today? What is your excuse this time? And you say what? <laughs> I still have to wait my math. You have to what? I still have to wait my mother for dinner. You're waiting for dinner? Oh my god. What do we got here? It means harmless. <laughs> 
completely harmless. These mushrooms. They're not poisonous. They won't hurt you. Uh, Innocent. Innocent means you didn't do anything wrong. And usually an innocent person means a harmless person. That's true. But there's another word for harmless. It's a pretty fancy word. Right, you don't have to worry about a puppy attacking you and trying to eat your arm off. Wise? Wise? No. Wise means smart, educated. Ladybugs. Cute. Cute, cute. cute mushrooms and cute. cute. Pure. Pure. Oh, pure means untainted, unspoiled, natural. No, not pure. Big word starts with I N. I N. What chi? No, I said nothing. <laughs> you said something. I heard you. That's why I said what chi. <laughs> Even though I don't see your mouth, I heard you. I am. That's a fancy word. You're in oh, the shit. 30s now. You're going into B2 levels, so we have to start putting in some bigger vocabulary. We've got to keep building this up and have more depth. How do we say that? Can you look at the phonics? In nope. In nauseous? In nauseous. Nope. In na, in na, in na, in Look at the KJU phonic there. What is that? How's that going to come out? Innocuous. 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 Yeah, some mushrooms look innocuous, but are in fact poisonous. An innocuous insect. Yeah, ladybug never killed anybody. <laughs> innocuous puppy. Yeah, innocuous just means completely harmless. You do not have to worry about it at all. Innocuous, yeah. <laughs> Something that has become quite a problem for teenagers these days. You think when someone is nasty, someone is rude, says bad things about you on the internet, trying to frighten you, trying to harm your reputation, sending unpleasant messages. What would you call a person like that? You could call them a troll, I guess. But there's another word for it, too. If they're picking on you. <laughs> All right, same thing in school. Bully. Yeah, bully. But this one is uh, this one is on the internet. What do you call that? Online bully. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's an actual word for it. What do you, what do you call? Uh, a being that is half robot, half human. Remember that, Matt? No. Oh, it's on our advertisement where you're on one of the advertisements and uh, you and uh, Adam are laughing because you didn't know what it was. And what do you call... Or, or this word is half human, half robot. Cy cyborg. Cyborg, yeah. So what's this word going to be? Cyberbully. Cyberbully, cyberbullying, yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Cyberbullying is what it's called. 
Cyberbullying. Two, two. <laughs> Have you ever had a cyber bully you? Or a cyber bully bullying you? No. No? Matt? Do you have bullies on Discord? No. I, I don't use Discord very much. No, not on Discord. I still have my Discord account open, but I don't use it very much either. My plan to do, uh, my plan for doing the English club has been far too difficult for me to put too enough time into it to make it work. I wish, I wish, but I got to build a new team eventually. But I got to build up the YouTube channel first so I can get some help. Code? Yeah, well, this, this requires coding and programming, but it creates a set of mathematical instructions and rules that especially, especially if given to a computer that help to calculate an answer to a problem. Now, program. part of it, it is a program, but what is the most important thing if you want to be popular on YouTube? How, how, is, how are people going to see your videos? Hmm. How does that work? It doesn't work by recommendations. There's something about YouTube that YouTube has it, Facebook, all the social medias have it. And it, it kind of records everything you do and it kind of decides where they're going to show it and all this kind of stuff. Mm. And if you pay, then they might turn the mm up for your page a little bit more so more people can see it and get more discoverability. Causation. Starts with an A. It's a very, very important integral, integral, integral uh, part of artificial intelligence. To be able to process information and make decisions. Starts with A. Uh, uh, uh. No, I'm sure you know this. I'm sure, you, especially you, Matt, because you have a YouTube channel. Are you still doing videos? No. No, you stopped, I huh? Know. It's good experience, though. Do you still have the channel there, or did you cancel it? My channel is still there, but I won't make any new videos. No more Rubik's Cube videos? Yes, because I'm not having much time now. Now that school is back in, in, in full swing, yeah. It's kind of hard to... Um, where is your page here? Oh my God, I didn't even realize it. I got 52 memberships on my... Oh. On my uh, I, I subscription, I have 52 subscriptions now. Holy macaroni. I didn't know that. Oh, there you are. Yo-yo caca slow cube. Cuber. Oh, you haven't worked on this in a long time. <laughs> yeah. Holy meatball. What the what the what? Tch. I'm unsubscribing then. <laughs> no? Nobody's got this? I know you know it. Algorithm? Yeah. See, I knew you knew it. Why you have to make me wait 10 minutes? <laughs> Sheesh. Unbelievable. <coughs> Unbelievable. Oh, why aren't you playing? There you are. Algorithm. Yeah, that's that. That's what collects all the information and the likes and the comments and the hit notification bell and all of that stuff. Right, and it's the algorithms. You know, and every, I think I think every country, company, social media platforms and stuff—they all have their own kind of um, 
plan, you know, and, and structures and designs and what they're looking for, things like that. But nonetheless, it is, it is, it is, it is. Algorithms, very important thing for social media. All right, so how do I get that off here now? Let's go to the next one. We'll go here, and we'll go here, and then we'll go back here, and we'll go here, like that. What the, what the, what? what? Ha, you didn't see it. Ha, 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 It's too long. <laughs> well, actually, the second word is just principle. Right, it's 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 kind of a theory, but well, I don't, yeah, I don't know if you'd call it a theory or if it's an actual law of the universe, the eighty twenty rule, the idea that a small quantity of work or resources equals time, money, employ employees, etc., can produce a large number of results. Um, throughout history, today, in the future, probably will always be the same. There's the eighty twenty rule. And what that 80-20 rule, it's based on a principle. I forget if it's the name of a, maybe a scientist or maybe, a, I'm not sure actually the origins of this word, word, but we'll check it once it comes up here to see if we have any, any information on where the name came from. But the theory is, what happened to Chi? Chi eating dinner? No. No? Why are you in a cave? Oh. <coughs> I forgot to turn... Mm. And did you forget to show your face too? You're just going to show your forehead? <laughs> My computer is broken. Yeah. <laughs> Not good enough. I want to see your mouth. Eesh. Um the 80/20 rule. The rule is kind of like this. They say that like, you know, 80 or 20% of the world has 80% of the money. Um 20% of the workforce does 80% of the work. Like productivity, right? That's why you always want to try to be in the in the twenty percent or higher, ten percent or the one percent would be the billionaires, right? Um, you know, eighty percent of the girls are attracted to twenty percent of the men. Um, what other eighty twenty can I think of? It can be applied to many, 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 many things. Ah, eighty percent of the. 80% of the population will get vaccinated. 20% will resist. You know, like 80% will follow the, the group where only 20% will try to be independent. Um, it, it's a rule that you can apply to, I, I don't want to say everything in life because I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure there are exceptions. But most things, it's kind of like a law of, a law of the universe. Um, yeah, and it's called the the Pareto principle. But I forget, I forget, I forget. Let me, let me, let me. Here we go. Let's go back and check here. The Pareto principle. I don't know where it comes from. I meant to check, but I forgot. Pareto. Oops. But you will hear the 80-20 rule many times. In your, in the future. Uh, Pareto. What kind of meaning is that? It doesn't really give a meaning. Pareto meaning in English. In English. Donating or involving the theory, a method of the Italian economist and socialist Vifredo Pareto. 1849, 1848 to 1923, especially the formula used to express the income distribution of society. Okay, so this, this was a economist and a sociologist who came up with this theory. And it was about the income distribution of society. So it was based on money. Originally, I guess. And that was what it was, but yeah, the eighty of the eighty percent of the sales come from twenty percent of the clients. Yeah. Yep, you'll hear that a lot, and it's it's a good theory because you can apply it to many many things in life. 
interesting thing. Now here's a, a, a new C1, C2 word for you. But again, like I said, when it comes to the B2 levels, um, I will put C1 and C2 vocabulary in here um, because we, we've got to go. We can't just keep putting the easy words and only what's in the book. We really got to challenge you and build up that vocabulary. And I can tell you that by doing that, like I, I teach uh, IELTS to um, Jack, Coco, and and um, and Gabby, Gappy. The, the ones that finished Interest 40, now they do, inter they do IELTS with me every Tuesday night. And um, the hardest thing for them is, of course, the writing. But because of the interest classes, um, all the, the reading comprehension, listening comprehension, and listening skills, they don't have any problems with it at all. It's quite easy for them to, to understand what's going on. Now it's just about learning the techniques on how to make the right questions and answer questions and do the writing. But their vocabulary is so high now that very rarely do we have to look up a word. So this is another word for... Uh, I wouldn't say debate. What do they say down here? Because this, this is a word I didn't know either, actually. I had to look it up. As a piece of writing or a speech, strongly attacking or defending a particular opinion, person, idea, or set of beliefs. So we put the, the Republicans and Democrats there because they often kind of attack strongly on viewpoints, right? Um, I guess the de Democrats are more socialist, I think it is. You know, they let more public systems. Republican is more capitalism. So they, they always seem to be at odds. Whatever one makes a policy this term, the next one comes in and changes the policy, and then it just keeps going back and forth. It's like no teamwork at all, which is really, really bad for governments. Um, they should be working together. And I could go into a, a whole bunch of points about that, but I'm not going to do that. Now, yeah, attacking or defending, usually quite aggressively. He has published a fierce anti-war yeah. I'm going to see if I can give you some other examples here. Well, I guess it's not really. You don't know the word, I'm sure, because we've never had it in any of our readings. But I'm just going to get a couple of sentences up here again, and then I'll show you the word. Now, it could be a noun or it could be an adjective. Of course, we could make it an adjective for sure. But the word is polemic. 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 Sounds like an A. Polemic. Polemical. Uh, ad adjective would be polemical. <laughs> so a polemical essay. So it's like really taking a strong point on the opposition or for something or defending something. It can be an idea, a belief. Um, but you're really stubborn on this. You're really focused on this and, and nothing they say is going to change your mind. I'm trying to find another example. Polemic is a controversial debate or dispute or a person who is inclined to argue. So it could be someone debating against you or arguing against you that he's right or you're wrong or something like that a written attack on a political decision all right so there's been many poly polemic many polemical articles and speeches about uh, covid-19 mandates for example right they're strongly opposed to some of the mandates the governments have uh, have imposed on people uh, a person who argues about a science or a religion and how s science and religion intersect in an exa is an example of polem polemic. polemic. Yeah, like, and you hear that about religion too. You'll hear people complaining about Islam uh, and people complaining about Catholic religion, especially complaining about politics, always, 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 corporations, pharmaceutical companies. Absolutely. Polemic. That's a good word to, to, to learn, to know. <coughs> uh, 
<coughs> Very powerful. Really deep. Understanding. Showing of a clear or deep understanding of serious matters. Yeah, to understand something very, very well. Or to have an effect, a very deep effect on someone. Uh, your parents have a mm, effect on your lives. Your schools, your friends. The invention of technology brought about mm, changes to the lives of humans. It's changed us in a way that a massive impact, right? Lasting impact, difference, effect, force. Now, this this was just an example in in uh, I think Cambridge probably. Goodwill hunting is a, is a very deep, moving, eye opening movie. It's about some college students that go to a private school, I believe in England. I'm, I'm not sure what country it's in. Um, and the professor is a very, very deep focused, insightful man. Um, and they talk about issues of life and the problems that people have to go through. And it's very insightful. It's a powerful movie. So there's another word for that. It was a thoughtful and mm film. It makes you think about makes you think about the courage to love yourself before loving others. You know, not be so hard on yourself and putting yourself down and thinking that you're inferior or not good enough to do something in life. These are all things that everybody goes through throughout different periods of their life. And um, it's not true. We are, we are capable of so much. And we are even beyond that. We are even capable of more than we even know. There's a great saying here that Jordan Peterson says, there's not only more to you than you know, there's more to you than you can imagine. And that's why you see some people do incredible things in life. You know, they all started out like you guys and me, but they didn't focus on the negatives and, and, and what holds them back to, to accomplish something in life. They were just stubborn and focused, and they just decided that they were going to do this in life and became you know, very successful or whatever the case may be. And we all have that power. We have no idea how powerful we can be. We can't even imagine it because we just don't see it. But it's there. So that word is profound. Profound effect. Profound influence. Profound understanding you know someone who i talk about jordan peterson a lot right i mean he he I, i'm right now i'm reading his thesis university thesis on the effects of alcohol on uh, the effects on children of alcoholic fathers and how how it affects the body first of all when they were born their parents were alco father was an alcoholic and how the upbringing of living with an alcoholic how that affects them so socially and, and physiologically and all these other things and whether or not uh, kids who grow up with alcoholics tend to become alcoholics or not, you know, and adoption and um, half-brothers and sisters and broken marriages. It's a really interesting thesis, right? When you go to university, at the end of your, your, your program, your four years, you usually have to write about a topic, right? You have to write a thesis about something. You have to do the research and you have to read about other people and you have to come up with your own ideas and your own hypothesis, your own theories uh, to show that you can do that kind of work in your field. Uh, so that's what he did when he graduated as a clinical psychologist. Um, what was my point? Well, my point is that as I'm reading that, I'm seeing that he went through and he read the, the research, the literature, all the way back to the 50s of every psychologist and scientist and experiment that was done by like 30, 40, 50 different people. So he had all of that knowledge. And then he explains why this group of people thought this after doing this kind of test. And he had all the information and he puts it all together in his thesis. And then he comes up with his own research and his own 
hypothesis and theories on this topic. So of course he wrote, a, he was a published, the thesis was so good that it became published, right? They publicly published it, whatever. I don't know how that works. I don't know anything about how they do that stuff, except that you have to write a thesis. Um, so he's a public speaker now. Do you know, do you know who Jordan Peterson is? Have you seen him on YouTube? No. No? Matt? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he blows my mind because I get a lot of my vocab from his public speaking. He was a, sci a, psycholo a private psychologist for many years. He's worked for big law firms. He's worked for United Nations. He was a professor at Harvard University. And then he was a professor at um, Toronto University because he's Canadian. Um, so the amount of research and knowledge he has, because it's so profound, so deep, he can get on stage and talk about these things, and he doesn't even need notes. You know, like he can articulate everything so perfectly, and he's written many books, you know, because he has such a profound understanding of psychology. You know, like he's the top teacher now. He's not a student anymore. Profound. Deep, deep, deep knowledge. And you want to be profound in something that you choose in the future. Because the more profound you are, the more understanding you have, and the more powerful you will be in your field. Okay, there's my speech. <laughs> this is a good word to know. Now notice plastic, for example. The quality of being soft enough to be changed in, into a new shape. Now, plastic can be hard. It can be flexible. And you can melt it, warm it up, and change its form permanently, right? Like uh, they took the saran wrap and they wrapped the vegetables. That plastic stretched and took a new form. The um, pottery, right? You know, the water and the clay and everything is mixed. And as you work it and work it, you can form it into something, into a permanent Cup, vase, pot. You can you can alter. Flex flexible. What it, well, flexible means you can bend it and it comes back to its original form. This one you can change it and it'll keep its new form. Just like the spring, right? That's a metal. But that's not how the metal was built. It was first a piece of metal, then they heated it, then they coiled it, wrapped it, wrapped it, and they set it, and they but now it has a pressure. Now it's an instrument. Now it's a tool. Now it's a device. It's kind of like steel, right? You can take lava, is that what they call it? Mol molten steel, the melted red steel. And then you can forge, bang, bang, on a cast iron, right? You can forge a sword, a beautiful sword from that. Well, that came from this, the, the melted steel, right? You can do it with diamonds. You can do it with uh, gold. Just like glass, right? You know, they take a, they put a blob of, of glass, which I think is made with sand and something else, and then they put air in it to make a bubble, and then they turn it around to make it perfectly rotate, and they make a light bulb, right? The quality of being soft enough to be changed into a new shape. Now, there's different, there are different explanations for this, but I was trying to make it as general as possible for you guys. The process is called plasticity. Plasticity. Say that one, Chi. Plasticity. Plasticity. Pla this 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 C is going to be an S sound, like city. Plasticity. Plasticity. Yeah, plasticity. Matt? Yes. Plasticity. No. Plasticity. No. <laughs> you got two <laughs> S's here, right? Just look at look how the word how the word is broken up. You know the end is gonna be city, but you wanna go plastis. Plastis. Plasticity. Yeah, and then put the city on the the last S. Plasticity. Plasticity. There you go. 
There you go. Piece of cake. You guys all have good pronunciation. You just have to focus on the sounds and put them together. The biggest thing is trying to remember what these words mean and practicing them once in a while. You guys, you guys, as second language learners, you really should have a notebook. And every time you see a word that you don't understand or it's hard to use, you should write it in your notebook. And then, you know, pick a 10-minute um, every day or five minutes every day and then just randomly pick some of the words, look up the meaning so you keep registering it in your head, and then just try to make a sentence or two. And that's how you're going to register it. That's why, like, you know, the easy words, you remember them, right? Because you use them all the time. But the harder words, the, more, the longer, more difficult words, they're harder to remember because we don't use them every day. Like if I say, what does remember mean? Oh, well, I know that. What is car? Oh, I know that. What is plastic? Oh, I know that. What is class? Oh, I know that. Because we use it in our vocabulary every day. But we need to add more vocabulary to our depth of vocabulary. Plasticity is a really good word too. Here's another really good word. Kind of like out of control, yeah. Is it? Um, yeah, we can say it in a in a joking manner, right? In a joking way, we can say I am a mm fan of Liverpool or Barcelona or something. Um, you know, and these people are mm followers of religion. I don't know what religion they're they're doing, but I mean they're like hands in the air and praise the Lord and you know I'm sure even if they were sick they would never miss their day in church or wherever they go some people are just so devoted to their beliefs right extremely interested in something holding extreme beliefs like more than the average person right this is really really like almost one of the most uh Almost the most important thing in life, certainly one of the most important things in their life. Belief that might even lead to unreasonable or violent behavior. Now, as I said, we use it in positive ways and negative ways. But this explanation says that it can lead to unreasonable, which, what does, which, sorry, unreasonable or violent behavior. For example, I'll give you a negative here. Unreas what does unreasonable mean? What is it you do to do something unreasonable? What would you and what, what would you be doing if you were unreasonable? What are you lacking? What are you not doing if you become unreasonable? Fascinate. Fascinate? No, that's like, wow, I'm amazed. I'm so fascinated by that. It's got my attention. No, no, unreasonable. What does that mean? That's a good vocabulary. I should throw that in interest. Interest uh, 21, unreasonable. Add that to that right now. Unreasonable. What does unreasonable mean? Come on, come on. You guys are interest 31. What is someone doing? If you call someone an unreasonable person, what's the problem? What are they not doing? Or what are they doing? Either or. Well, what's reasonable? Is this fanatism? Is, is what? Fanatism. Fanatism. Oh, the word that we're looking for is fanat fan fanatism. Is that a word? Fanatism. Maybe. Let me check here. You might have it. I don't remember hearing that one. I've heard all the other forms. Fanatism. Fanatic, yeah. Fanaticism. Okay, that is a word. Fanaticism. Fanaticism. <laughs> fanaticism. That is the word I'm looking for. But it's not, well, fanatical is the word I was looking for. The adjective. Fanatical person. But uh, again, okay, so you got that. So you take a 4-2 lead. But I want to go back to reasonable. What, what does it mean for a person to be reasonable or unreasonable? 
What is that meaning? Uh, a question? What? Chi? Well, I said uh, a person? Yeah, well, yeah, it would be it, it would be of a person. We would call a person reasonable or unreasonable. What are we saying if we're saying he's reasonable or unreasonable? Matt, you don't know either? Really? You guys don't know reasonable and unreasonable? What the unsuitable? No, nothing about suitable. Oh, my. I thought you guys knew this. I should have put this in here, too. <coughs> a reasonable person is someone who thinks things through common sense you know he, he he has reason behind what he says and what he does you you want to be around reasonable people it's like rational people people that they think before they speak before they act before they do something right Unreasonable means you can't communicate with them. It doesn't matter what you say. The sky is blue. He, they say it's black. You, you, you say the field is green. They say it, it's red. Like you cannot, you, you, you can't communicate with them. They're completely unreasonable and they refuse to think or look at an other option or look at it from a different perspective. They are unreasonable. This happens in arguments sometimes, and, and you're trying to get the other person to see your point of view, and maybe you're not wanting to see their point of view, so maybe they're being unreasonable or you're being unreasonable. You're not having a proper conversation. You're just opposed to each other. So a fanatic or fanatical, fanatical person, again, you know, you could say, oh, I'm a fanatic. Or I'm a fanatic. I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm a fanatic for pizza, you know. I'm, but I'm kind of saying it jokingly that it's like one of the most important things to eat. But just because I really like it, but I'm not going to do anything crazy or unreasonable or violent <laughs> behavior because I don't have a pizza, right? So I mean, I say it's used both ways. But the literal meaning of a fanatic is someone who doesn't think clearly and is almost brainwashed. And it can lead to violent behavior. For example, I think it was in Brazil. You know, it was something like this. You know, the fans were so fanatic about their football team that they started fires in the stadiums. They ended up burning the stadium down and people died. Like, it was just ridiculous. And fanatic can lead to violence, too. There was also, again, Brazil. <laughs> um, not, not too many years ago. There, I think it was just before the World Cup in Brazil. Pretty sure it was just before that. A story was released. Um, I tried to search it on Google and everything, and I got bits and parts. And I don't know if it was in Brasilia or a place up north in, in Brazil. And um, the fans are so fanatically involved with their team that um, they refuse to believe that they could lose. And, and one player got a yellow card. And, he, of course, they fought with the referee. And I don't know if the referee was corrupt or not. Who knows? I mean, maybe he was an evil guy, too. I don't know. But then he got a red card or something, and he got kicked out. But the player refused to leave. And uh, But it turned out the player actually had a knife on him on the field and stabbed the referee. Oh. And Yeah. And, and they killed him. And, and apparently the fans were such fanatics that they went down and they, and 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 they well I'm not going to say what they did but it um it went beyond reasonable actions like it was very unreasonable and very violent what happened at the game because of because of what they believed in right they were fanatical you you, you couldn't convince them they they were just like zombies now they're yeah fanatical can be bad yeah you can look that up Referee dying in Brazilian football match, and you can see for yourself what happened. It was pretty horrific. Now, it's not naive 
right? Naive is kind of a negative thing, right? I mean, of course, children are naive for sure because they don't have a lot of experience, worldly experience. So it's easy for them to believe what people say to them. Uh, and it's easy for them. It's easy for them. Easy to make them believe a lie, because um, they just don't have the the insight. They don't have the experience yet. This one is similar. This one is very similar, right? I mean, it's to be quiet and easily influenced. You know, people can influence you, persuaded and controlled. Uh, of, of course, dogs, I guess, could be this too, because you can train them and you can make them obedient. Um, children are like this too. Um, but there's, um, it also means like harmless. Now a naive person, I would think, you know, once they know that someone cheated them and lied, you know, you could be naive, but you could still be violent, right? You could still retaliate. This one is really, really passive. Very similar meaning. Starts with a D. A D, yeah. I'm trying to remember some of the adjectives for this. I mean, the uh, synonyms. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Naive is one of them. Let's see what I got here. Yeah, compliant. You know, you follow all the rules, do what you're told, obedient, pliant, kind of like compliant, pliant, dutiful, you do what you believe you have to do, willing, passive, submissive, tame, meek, mild, unresisting, unassertive. Doesn't say naive, actually. Five. Four. Three. Attentive. Attentive uh, means you pay attention, means you listen. Revolted. What is it? Revolted. Revolted? Now, revolted is to, to go against, like a rebel. Or to take away, to revolt something, or an uprising. There's an article in right now with a, a revolt going on in the U.S. For, with Trump supporters or something, or at least that's what the Democrats are trying to say. Oh, it's a brutal game they play. <laughs> now, nah, this is docile. Docile. Quiet, easy to influence, persuade, to control. The word is docile. He's a very docile. You know, he's really laid back, easy to influence. Not very assertive. Docile. Chi? Docile. Yeah. And we usually use it with animals. Peaceful animals. Docile animals. More, I, I, I think we use it more with animals than we do with people. Docile, Matt. Docile. Da, docile, not docile, docile, docile. 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 not sile. No, I'm sorry. Let me, let me, let me see the pronunciation here. I could have that wrong. Docile. I think it's da. I think it. Well, it, yeah, it's funny because I've heard docile. He's docile, and I've heard docile, but I think it's docile. Let's see. Let's just make sure here. Docile, maybe. Docile. Docile, okay. And now let's see if there's a difference with the British English. Docile. All right. Docile, American. Docile. Ah, okay, I did hear it. I'm right. Docile is British. Docile is American. Okay. Horrific. Terrible. This is an absolute. Mm. No, this government is 
making billions of dollars, taking all the natural resources from this country, causing the mass of the population to be so poor and impoverished. People are starving to launch weapons of mass <coughs> destruction on, on a city, killing so many innocent people, all oh, for politics and power. And then the skeletons up here, I'll tell you that story in a minute. That's a true story that happened very, very close to here. An extremely cruel, violent, or shocking act. What's a word for that? You know, the, the nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and uh, it was two. It was another city they hit, but I forget the name. What was the other city? Nagasaki. Nagasaki, was that? That's what it was? Okay, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I mean, those weren't, as far as I know, those weren't military targets. So, you know, it was hundreds of thousands, population wasn't that big then. Hundreds of thousands of innocent people died for, you know, which they had nothing to do with the war. You know, it's, it's just a complete, <clears throat> something of horrible results. Violent, shocking, cruel acts. Your story? A what? This story? No, it's you. You can destroy your computer. That's not a. That's not a. Uh, not like this word. No, this is massive. You know, bomb is a bomb, but a nuclear bomb is a uh, much more powerful. Yeah. And this one, it's like you know, people die. Starts with an A. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 uh. <laughs> it's a new word, but again, it's another word you got to add to your. Uh, you know, when you want to say the worst results possibly happened, it was the worst disaster. This was an absolute, absolute atrocity. Atrocity. Yeah, an absolute <laughs> atrocity. This was not needed. This should not have happened. This is an atrocity on human, uh, on 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 Earth, on in the world. One of the you know, like World War Two. One of the worst. The the the, the, the uh, you know Hitler and the, the 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 what do they call that? The concentration camps. You know, it was an atrocity on humanity. Some of the things that happen in Africa and stuff, it's an atrocity on people. Um, for hundreds of thousands of people, it was an atrocity what happened during World War II in Japan. You know, it's not, it's not the people that wanted to go and attack Vietnam and Indonesia and Malaysia. It was, it was the leaders, you know, the people in control, the big bosses. And, and they cause millions of deaths all the time. It's just... It's just it's an atrocity. Now, does anybody know what this picture is with all these broken skeletons? I'm surprised. No. I'm surprised it's not taught in school here because this happened next door during the Vietnam War. Oh. Cambodia. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, the Khmer, you... Khmer Rouge. The, go the government that was ruling in Cambodia during the Vietnam War. And uh, they were doing genocide, right? They were killing all these uh, ethnic groups of people in Cambodia. And they, I don't know how much exactly. For some reason, it seems to me it was 1 million or 4 million people. I can't remember how many people. I, I haven't read about it in many times. I've gone there. I've, I've visited the museum and, I, and I've gone to the killing fields uh, where all these mass graves were dug up with, tens of thousands of bodies and it was horrible you know the, the government was just killing all these people left right and center men women children it didn't matter they wanted to get rid of this ethnic group and this group of people and it, it was horrible it was absolutely horrible what happened it was an absolute atrocity what happened in cambodia during the vietnam war nothing to do with the vietnamese it was all about the the leaders in cambodia but it, that, again, is an atrocity. Okay. Yeah, here's another C 
one C two word for you to finish it today. But again, you know, we gotta build up these words. We gotta get practice. We gotta get exposure to them. You know, we'll see them again. It's like, oh, wait a minute, I know that word. You know, we just gotta keep building on it, building on it. So this is another word for like manipulation, but it's kind of like a more formal word for manipulation. Chi gets the win today. Huh, four two. <laughs> Stop the lies. Act of not telling the truth. Right? Of course, it's a lie. And then if you're trying to trick someone and make them believe something, it's manipulation. And then you go a step further. Mendacity. The mendacity of a person to be able to 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 try to persuade and lie to us in that way and mislead us. Again, you hear it referred to like toward politicians and lawyers and different things for their own self benefits and not the benefit of people. Uh, mendacity. Mendacity. Let me get this word in here again. So let me give you a couple of examples before we take a break. Mendacity meaning. Here we go. Uh, yeah, see, okay. And, and now the mendacity of that man. Untruthfulness. People publicly castigated for past mendacity. Okay, that's a tough one. What is it meant? Okay, the quality of being mendacious means untruthness, untruthfulness, tendency to lie and... An instance of lying, falsehood. Yeah, not good. Not good. Where does the word mendacity come from? This mendacity. Mendacity. Um, that's not a compliment. Where does mendacity? Mendacity comes from the Latin root word mendacium or lie. Don't confuse mendacity with a singular sounding word, audacity. Audacity means the nerve. Yeah, that's different, which means fearlessness, daring, and brave. How dare you say that? What audacity you have. That's different. But mendacity, yeah, it's, a, it's, a for, it's, a, it's just a f more of a formal word for a liar. You know, in a courtroom, they might say, the mendacity of this man has put these people in jeopardy instead of the lying of this man. Lower level, higher level words. Mendacity. Try that one, Matt. Mendacity. Matt. Can't hear you. You're muted. Sorry. Unbelievable. Oh, you're dead. Mendacity. Uh, Matt. Mendacity. Yeah, mendacity. Just like plasticity, mendacity. <laughs> Chi. Mendacity. All right, <coughs> good job. All right, so I guess, <coughs> I guess we'll just cut it all off right here. We'll take a break. We'll go through some of the words again because there was a lot of new words here, pretty high level, for this class. But that's okay. That's what we got to practice, and then. Um, We'll do our readings about all the different safety online. And we'll wrap everything up. So, on that note, it's break time.